Now on YouTube, you let me know if you can hear me. Because <laughs> you shouldn't be able to. If I did this right. Actually, no, you should be able to. Just kidding. You can hear me on YouTube. That's fine. You might not be able to hear the music, but that's okay. I can hear. Can you hear the music and me or just me? That's the real question. You should only be able to hear me. Honestly, tech is so confusing. Just me. Both. Oh, both. Both. Yes, music and me. Oh, interesting. Music's a little quiet. Oh, you're picking it up from the microphone. That's why. Okay, that's fine. That's totally fine. That's fine. There's not going to be music during the PowerPoint, so that's totally, totally fine. Okay. That works. Hi, everyone. You're hearing me from TikTok. Um, I'm letting everyone on TikTok know I highly recommend you go to YouTube because you're going to it's it's just going to be a better experience. You're going to need your phone for the quiz. So go to YouTube.com slash at Rosebud's Realm. Just just head on over there now. I know you're on TikTok. I can see you. I'll leave it open for TikTok just so you guys know. But I highly recommend you walk over there. TikTok, you're going to see me do the most embarrassing social influencer thing ever, which is take a selfie and um, put it on Instagram. So excuse me. This is things that people don't typically see behind the screen. You don't typically see me do stuff like this. Um, okay, where's the live? Oh, excuse me. Rude. Where's my channel? Uh, there it is. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Rude. Oh, I don't want to hear my voice. Okay. This is stuff that you typically don't see. How long is class? It should be around an hour. It shouldn't be that long. Okay, you ready for the embarrassing selfie? There we go. Time. Time for class. And then we go. And then I just put the link. There is a quiz. Of course there's a quiz. Hello, hi guys. I think I might send you guys down some spirals, which is really exciting. <laughs> okay. Now there are a lot of screens going on, so forgive me if it takes me a minute because there is going to be a, a, a quick screen change for the for the quiz, and then there's a quick screen change on TikTok. So there's a lot of stuff, but hi, hello. There is, I can give you the link to it. Let me actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do that on um, YouTube right now. There is a link. And you're gonna see it too. It's gonna, it's gonna pop up, so you guys are gonna see it. So don't panic just yet because when you see the PowerPoint presentation, it's going to give you like where it's going to tell you where to go. There's actually a QR code that pops up, which is very nice. Um, but if anyone just wants the link, uh, I don't want to delete it. Okay, good. I didn't delete it. Uh, share link. Okay. Link to interact. Yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and post that. And then I think I can pin it. Yep, there you go. There you go. Now you guys are good. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. All right, are you guys ready? Are you ready to get started? I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna turn the music off. Music's off now, no more music, okay. Hi, you, you're gonna get me twice for just a quick second, okay, on TikTok. But if you're on YouTube, just let me know if you can hear me. You should be able to hear me. Okay, I'm gonna explain a few things before I show you the PowerPoint, okay? I just wanna explain, music's off, perfect. That's what I want. I don't want you guys to hear the music. Um, okay, hi everyone. So welcome to our first masterclass. I'm so excited. This has been like one of my favorite things to work on in a while. It's, it's been a real joy and we're going to have, um, more of a, uh, session in a second, in a second, before we get started, I wanted to say something really quick. Number one, there is a possibility I might have missed some things. <laughs> I just want to make that note. So if you notice I missed something, don't just, just, you can say it at the end. The other thing I want to say is you're going to notice some information is not included in here. And that was on purpose because 
Our next class is on fantastic beans and where to find them. And then our class after that is on objects. So I didn't pull full in-depth quotes about the objects. I didn't pull full in-depth quotes about beans. So that information is kind of small because today we are just focusing on dates and ancient history. Okay, that's it. That's all we're focusing on. So I just want to make that known. So if you're like, wait, we're not talking about this. I, I probably know. But if you want, but just so just don't panic. But at the very end, if you're like, wait, we didn't bring this up. Let me know and we can research it at the very, very end. Is everyone cool with that? Okay, there is a quiz at the end. I don't want you to panic about that. I, please know, I am a anxious test taker. It is multiple choice. All the answers are in the PowerPoint. There is one bonus question that is just fun. That is not in the PowerPoint, but you guys should know this. You should know this piece of information if you're here. So please don't panic. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Okay, here you go. All right, and then on, there you go. Okay. I think we have it all set set up. All right, so welcome to the masterclass. All right, so housekeeping. We kind of did that just now, but we're gonna go through it a little bit more. So as you see, this is like very dark academia vibes. I'm like very, 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 very into it. Um, so we're gonna do some housekeeping really quick. Then we're gonna talk about the ancient history of Aurelia, Perithian, and Midgard. And we're going in that order. Then there's a quiz, then there's a Q&A. There is sections in between. There is sections in between each world realm for a quick question. So please don't panic. If you want to put questions in the Q&A, you can, but I do have both TikTok and YouTube up so you guys can just put questions in there and I'll try my best to answer them. But I'm going to try and um, answer it. What? Oh, moved over. I was like, wait, did something move over? Okay, good. All right. We're feeling good. Okay. So here is where the information for the quiz is going to be. We're going to go to slido.com or if you're on your phone, you can download the app slido and the code tonight is masterclass with two A's. Okay. It's just masterclass. That's all it is. Master is in Sarah J mass. Get it? Mass masterclass. Okay. So you're going to go slido.com. Okay. I'm going to give everyone a second. This is just something fun. This is not the quiz. Okay. My first question is what are you drinking tonight? What are you drinking tonight? This is like old school book buds. We used to do this every time when we did it. And so I just want to know, what is everyone drinking tonight? Oh, I see people are typing. Okay, okay, okay. Water, obvi. Okay, all right, all right. I see wine. All right. Water, red wine, root beer. Ooh, I love that. I had a Shirley Temple today. Okay, well, ooh, tequila. Some, uh, is that Amanda? Is Amanda on the tequila train? I'm guessing Amanda's on the tequila train. Um, hint, watermelon. Oh, my favorite is blackberry, so I love that. Dr. Pepper Zero, iced tea, spiked, spiked lemonade. Ah, oh, apple cider, my favorite. Tequila, water and lemon. I have water and lemon myself. Oh, wait, hold on, sorry. I'm over here for this. Does that help? <laughs> I like switched myself so that I'm not away from the code. Um, lemon ginger tea with honey. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay. Um, uh, lots of water. My tears. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, oh, I saw Dr. Pep. Did I see Diet Coke and Malibu? One of my favorites. I'm a Dr. Pepper Malibu or I'm a Dr. Pepper whiskey gal. I love a good Dr. Pepper and Makers. Mm, so good. Whiskey Makers is like, yes. Um, vanilla Coke. I love it. I love it. Cranberry water. Okay, great. I love this. I love this. I love this. Okay, next question. This is just a poll. This is kind of to, to, to gauge our group right now. And that is, what is your favorite Sarah J. Mass series? Now, I'll be honest. I usually get the Throne of Glass girlies. I usually get the Throne. I'm in my Throne of Glass era. But I, I know Akatar is a popular one. So I'm just curious. I see 9% for Crescent City. Okay, that's fine. 64%, uh, 65% Throne of Glass. Okay, okay. How do you pick just one? Just pick one. Just pick one. It's fine. It's fine. Just pick one. Just pick one. Don't panic. It's fine. Okay? You're doing great. Um, hold on a second. I'm going to pop this out really quick so I have it. Oh, you guys can probably see the chat from TikTok. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. Throne of Glass all the way. I love seeing all the Throne of Glass. We got a lot of Throne of Glass girlies. We got some Akatar BFFs. I love seeing the besties. We got some Crescent Cities. Listen, if you asked me to rank it, it would be Throne of Glass, Crescent City, Akatar. I'm going to be honest. That's what it would be. It would be Throne of Glass, Crescent City, Akatar. That is, that is how I would rank the series. And I'm sticking with it. So just, just in case anyone's wondering, that would be my personal ranking. Uh, would be Throne of Glass, Crescent City, Akatar. So 
I, I love seeing kind of the differences. On TikTok, I'm seeing a lot of water, sparkling water and peach flavored. Love that. That's one of my mom's favorites. We actually, in our household, we drink a lot of peach iced tea and we put frozen peaches in it. We're very into our peaches here. Okay. All right. That was, this is kind of how it's going to work. Okay. And then at the very end, we're going to do the quiz. The quiz is not timed. I mean, it is kind of timed, but like, don't worry. There's not like a timer. I'm going to keep an eye on how many people are participating. So like, please, again, don't panic. Okay. All right. Are you guys ready? Okay, I want to go ahead and set the ground rules for what this is because I want to make it very clear that the purpose of this lesson and the purpose of all of these lessons is to have a deeper understanding of the three universes in the Sarah J. Mass universe, which is Aurelia, Prathena, Midgard. We will be comparing and contrasting the three universes to see if there is a potential crossover. But it's canon first. Canon first is the most important thing tonight. Theorize second, okay? I want you guys... Oh, wait, let me move myself. Sorry, hold on. Okay, there we go. I moved myself. See, it's going to take me a second. Okay. Canon first, and then we're going to theorize second. Okay. So what that means is I'm just giving you canon information and I will let you guys theor theory spiral. That's what we're going to do. I'm not going. Oh, and the one thing I did want to say throughout the, while we're doing the lesson, throughout the lesson, if you guys have any questions, you can go back to Slido and put it in the Q&A function that should still be available to you, but you can also put it in the chat. I'm watching both. At the very, very end, we'll use the Slido Q&A, so don't feel like you got to flood it right now. Just wait. Okay? So tonight is all about keeping you guys canon. Okay? You're going you're gonna to see why. All right. Are we ready? Okay, so we're starting with ancient history of the universe. That's what today's lesson's about. We're going to, so the way, let me quickly say, the way this is going to work is we're going to break it down by book because that was the easiest way to do it. And we're going to do it in order of the series. So it's going to go Throne of Glass, Perithian, Throne of Glass, Akatar, then Crescent City. Other lessons might be different, but it was just the easiest way to do it tonight is to just do it by book. Okay. So Throne of Glass. Here are some ancestral history found in book one of Throne of Glass. Um, the first thing is Brandon's Force, which is, which is introduced in chapter five. And it one of the very interesting things is it says it's estimated that Brandon's Force is over 2,000 years old and was the home to many different creatures from gnomes, sprites, nymphs, and so many more that I didn't even list because we'll talk about it in the next lesson, okay? However, it was always ruled by the immortal Fae. And in chapter eight, which is later in the book, Selena brings up 2,000 year old books that were once in Terrison's libraries and she hopes it was saved from when Otterlin had attacked okay just so everyone is aware now word marks we're gonna get back to this in crowd event at night so don't worry so um something this is from Nehemia because you know Nehemia our queen she she had all the information she had all the facts so Nehemia said that some books claim the word is the force that holds together and governs Aurelia not just Aurelia but countless other worlds too so that's what's really interesting is like 2012, Sarah was already putting this in the text, okay? She was already putting this. I love that you guys are loving the slides. Thank you, thank you. They're very, oh, they're so fun, okay? So just so everyone is aware, that's kind of the deal. And then it later on says in chapter 27, but the word isn't a religion, at least not in the northern parts of the continent. It is not included in the worship of the goddesses or the gods. Now, we do know this from Tower of Dawn, which we're going to get into, but we do know that in Tower of Dawn, they mentioned that there are 36 gods. So we know that there is a different religious system. Now, there, I was shocked by this because if you had asked me before this lesson, I would have told you there's no such thing as a mother goddess and throne of glass. But it is brought up once, and it is brought up here. It says, some theories suggest that the mother goddess is just a spirit from one of these other worlds, and that she strayed through something called a word gate and found Aurelia in need of form and life. Kind of interesting. Okay. Crown of Midnight. Baba Yellegs, I'm going to be honest, just everyone go grab Crown of Midnight and just put a big sticky note in chapter 40, because this is where the crossover really starts. It's chapter 40 of Crown of Midnight. Okay. So the word governs and forms the foundation of this world, not just Aurelia, but all life. There are worlds that ex exist beyond your knowledge, worlds that lie on top of each other and don't even know it. Fun fact, it's the same thing that is said in Silver Flames, which I'm going to read again when we get to that. Right now, you could be standing in the bottom of someone else's ocean. The word keeps these realms up part. Okay. Another really interesting thing about this um, presentation and about this whole PowerPoint presentation, 
I had always thought, I don't know if anyone else was confused by this, but the Valg and the Demon Wars, they always sound like they were two separate things. It was very, very clear to me as we were going through it now that the Valg and the Demon Wars are actually the same. It just depends on who is talking and what the context is. So Baba Yellowlegs explains that long ago before humans overran this miserable world, the Valg, aka demons from another realm, arrived. That's the exact thing. She says demons from another realm. And the Val Wars were fought over in Wendelin and in Terrasen. Now, I added the Terrasen part, but actually what the text says is it says Wendelin, which I thought was really interesting because I always just assumed it was in Terrasen only. But then she does clarify and says it's in Wendelin. So kind of a little interesting fun fact. Now, the witches, um, and this is just a very brief thing of witch history. We're going to get into more of it when we get to the creatures and beings. Um next month but witch history so the crocken witches ruled for a thousand years before baba yellow legs helped destroy the crocken family or so they thought 500 years ago so they ruled so the the witches had been ruling for a thousand years at least just the crockens and then the iron teeth aka baba yellow legs the yellow legs destroyed it air fire queen of shadows we just combined it into one um now, before, I'm going to say this, there are family trees coming up in the next slide, because if you're anything like me, you get Mabe, Mora, Mabe, Mora and Mala confused, and I'm going to clarify that, okay? Because it's, it can be a little confusing. Okay. So, Mab was immortalized. Now, does everyone remember this? People always bring this up, because they're like, oh, Mab was turned into Deanna. Well, let me read you the exact quote, and let me, let me find out if y'all feel the same way after this. Which it says, at the sun goddess temple, Aelin brings up that over 500 years ago, Mab was immortalized into godhood thanks to Maeve. She was immortalized thanks to Maeve. This is chapter 25 of Air Fire. Um, well, now what we know what Maeve is, I have questions about that, but I just want to make that known that that is what it says. Now... If you know anything about me, one of my Roman Empire things is the creature under the mountain in air fire. Okay, I have been talking about this for God knows how long at this point. I talk about the creature under the mountain in air fire since like I started reading these books because it's sketch. I thought it was Koshe. It's not, but I'm just saying. So after Aelin and Rowan return from defeating the creature under the mountain, they speak to Luca and Emrys to find out more. And during the conversation, Luca says the story is from an archaic form of the old language. In fact, he says he's not even heard of this form of the language. It's different than the form that is on Rowan's tattoo, which is kind of interesting. Okay. Now I'm moving on to Queen of Shadows. So we're going right to Queen of Shadows. Please tell me, for the love of God, you guys all know about the God of Truth, the Sin Eater, I think is what they also call him. So the Sin Eater, also known as the God of Truth. So it says some of the oldest bones were carved 900 years ago. Aelin, Adian, and Rowan are underneath this tunnel. They find carved bones. And the oldest ones they find are a thousand, almost a thousand years old. Specifically, they are 900 years old. 900 years old. These bones. The oldest bone she found was 900 years old. Okay. Then later on in Queen of Shadows, which is right after the Princeling Witchling, which I know y'all, y'all don't forget about Princeling Witchling. Y'all are like, oh, Princeling Witchling, hello. Right after that, when Manon and Aelin fight, okay, they go to these temple ruins in the Oakwell Forest. And during the fight, Aelin and Manon fight during these crumbling ruins for Temis, which is one of the gods, and which look as if they had been altered. It looked as if the altar had not survived in centuries. So that tells you people had not been going to this temple in centuries. So that has nothing to do with the war in Otterland. But it is interesting that, like what, like explain, okay? So I want to quickly go over because the first thing I said in here was about Mab. I'm going to show you some family traits just to clarify, okay? So... The Galathinius household, this is ruled by Bran and Galathinius. This is where it was started. And he fell in love with Mala, the firebringer. Mala is a goddess, okay? Mala became a fae to be with Brandon, all right? They had Elena, and let's be honest, they had another kid because there's no way they gave their only child to go run off in Otterlin. Absolutely not. There was someone else to run Terrison. Orinth, who's that person? I don't know. Sarah, tell me. I need to know. I need to know. Who was the person running Terrison. I'm assuming it was a brother. I'm assuming it was a brother from the same mother. And I need to know. I'm just saying. Okay. So Elena and Gavin married and they went to run 
Otterlin, the Haviliard line. Okay. But Brandon and Mala, Mala's the goddess. Okay. Get all the way down to Aelin. The Ash River household is ran, was started, or I should say the, the founding person is Mab. Okay. And she was a queen of the Fae. Mab is the one that turns into the swan. They both turn into birds. I know it's confusing. Okay. Okay. They turn into bones. Or <laughs> I just saw the bones thing. <laughs> they turn into birds. Okay. Mab. Mab is the one that starts the Ash River. That is Aelin and Adian's great-grandmother. But because it goes through the, the female line, it's, a, it's more important than it's Aelin's. Okay. But it's also Adian's. I want to make that very clear. Okay. So Mab, Faye from the Ash River line. Mora, the one who was turned into a goddess thanks to Maeve, is from the Whitethorn family tree. This is another one of my Roman Empire things. If you get me on my soapbox about the White Whitethorn family, I could talk about this for hours because I have a lot of questions. And it has nothing to do with Rowan. Rowan, I love you, boo, but it has, it's barely, it has anything to do with him. I just have questions about the Whitethorns. I have a lot of questions, but I want to make it clear. Mora, Mora, who's the one who turns into a hawk. I know, I know. Okay. They describe her as very cunning. It is literally described that she's very cunning. Okay, I just I just need to make that note. All right, we're moving on. We can if I will I don't I'm not I told you I'm not going to tell you my theories, but I have theories about Mora now. Now that I've done this, I have theories, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you. Okay, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, Tower of Dawn. Has anyone here not read Tower of Dawn? I'll be honest, I skipped it. It was a dumb decision, but you have no excuse once Hosap came out. You have no 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 uh, Endymion. Avery makes me practice. I just call him Indy, but it's Endymion. Endymion, Selene, by the way, that's the name of my car because I thought it was Rowan Whitethorn, but then I realized she, it was a woman and she was very sassy, so it's Selene Whitethorn. Selene, Endymion. Okay, I'm going back to this. Okay, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn. Not really a whole lot of ancient history in Empire of Storms. There's lots of objects and like being history in Empire of Storms. So we're, we'll, we will deep dive into that book later, but not a lot of ancient, ancient history. Okay. So the war with Erewhon, which by the way, is at the very beginning, it's the prologue in Empire of Storms. So in the chapter, in chapter 64, this is when um, Aelin and Manon are in the Witchmere. It says, Aelin and Manon go back in time and see Elena trap Erewhon a thousand years ago. It was 1,000 years ago. And this was the story of how Aelin became the queen who was promised. And this is also when Elena basically apologizes to Aelin. It's like, well, I didn't know who you were, so I didn't really care. And it's like, well, Elena, that doesn't excuse anything you just said. But anyways. Okay. Tower of Dawn, y'all got to give Lucy props because Lucy pulled the Tower of Dawn stuff. I was like, homegirl, you know that book way better than me. Make sure I didn't forget anything. Lucy pulled it. She's in here. She's in the chat. And um on youtube so please give her all the love because she pulled the tower of dawn stuff um so the tore the tore chesme the tore chesme um irene tells kale in chapter 25 it is 1500 years old and it was built in one go a gift from an ancient queen to a healer who saved her child's life a place for the healer to study and live close to the palace and to invite others to study as well okay so that tore chesme 115 years old no, 1,500 years old. I always say that wrong. 1,500. Okay. The Valg in the South. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. Okay. So when Nezrin is speaking to the spiders in chapter 31. Oh, is that the right chapter? I think so. She learns that the Valg on this side of the continent, meaning the southern continent, were not soldiers. They were not soldiers, but a vanguard who assessed this land and did not find what they were seeking. So they weren't salt, they weren't conquering anything. They were just assessing. That's all they were doing. Okay. So when the Valg were banished from their realm and the Fae came here to these mountains, they taught the Rooks to fight, taught the Rooks the language of the Fae and the men. So the Rook writers, aka Sartak, they know the language of the Fae. They because they were taught that. That's that's who taught them about the Rooks was the Fae. I didn't know that. I was like, what? Okay. We ain't done with Tower of Dawn, the city of the dead now. <laughs> okay, so while in the oasis, this is right before Irene pushes Hussar into the pool. It's really iconic, okay? It's super, super, super iconic. Right before she pushes her into the pool, we learn about the city of the dead. And this is what it says. And I pulled a lot of the quotes because they were super, super important. 
So it says, Hassar said, uh, it was a city of the dead. Irene frowned at an ornate column and slabs of carved stone crested with forest life, a sprawling necropolis right beneath our feet. Irene ran her hands over the pillar carved with animals and strange creatures. But this site predates the Cognate. The Torre and Tika too, whoever was here before. I want you guys to really pay attention to the fact that she says strange creatures and think about that when I get to the Akatar slides. Okay, I just... I just want you to think about that, okay? As Irene walks, she finds more drawings, and Irene pointed to an army facing the Fae one. Smaller than the Fae, their bodies were bulkier, claws and fangs and wicked-looking blades. She mouthed the word, Valk, holy gods, Irene rushed to the other pillars, ripping away vines and dirt, more Fae faces and figures. Some were depicted in one-on-one -on -one battles against the Valk and commanders. Some felled, fled, whatever, uh, by them, some triumphant, uh, whatever kale begins to notice that the place is covered in word marks and it says they didn't bury humans here irene whispered for the markings were sealed in stone gates the old language he'd seen it inked in rowan's face in his arm this was the fey burial site not fey fey not human kale says i thought only one group of fey left ornell to establish terracin with brandon maybe others settled here during whatever war this was so this literally confirms that there were fey in the southern continent now if you ask me where do you think that fey went Anyways, this isn't a theory spiral. Canon information. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, okay? But I also want you guys to keep in mind that Irene really only knows of the Valg. She's not there, you know, that's the word she's using, okay? Kingdom of Ash. Okay, so the story of Maeve, which again, I didn't put it all in here. We're going to get back to Maeve. Okay, Maeve, is, <laughs> Maeve needs like her own thing. Okay, so in while in Aelin's mind, because it's just torturous, this is chapter 20. This is when she's literally in an iron coffin. It says Maeve tells her about how she came became a world walker. And that's the word she uses. Maeve specifically tells Aelin it was forbidden to word world walk. Okay outlawed long before her husband and his brothers were born. Once the last of the ancient wayfarers had died out, the paths between realms were sealed, their methods of world walking lost with them. So then Maeve contacts a wave wayfarer, who that is what she calls a world walker, but they refused to tell her. So the queen began to teach herself, opening and closing doors long since forgotten and sealed. And Maeve later goes on to explain that the Val Kings did not just world walk, but they permanently opened the door with the keys. So this tells you that there was a totally different way to cross over with wayfarers and they wouldn't tell Maeve. And the fact that when Maeve arrived... They didn't tell her, like her and all of the Val Kings, that was forbidden. They weren't allowed. Before they were even born, they weren't allowed to, to, to travel worlds. So very interesting information. So then they're looking at the mirrors. And this is chapter 76. I like to call this the WTF moment for Dorian because I don't know about you, but I never saw Dorian with Maeve that to this day, I'm like, oh, right, that's canon. It's very shocking to me. Uh, Dorian asks Maeve if they can show a different world. And Maeve responds by saying, with mirrors, and she says, who do you think taught the witches such power, not the fae? So she says that she's the one who taught the witches how to use the mirrors, which is very interesting. Okay. Timeline time. Are you ready? You guys always ask me for a timeline. This is the one time you're going to get one. Okay. So... Just to put everything into perspective of what we just learned. So 2,000 years ago, Brandon's Forest is ruled by the Fae, okay? But also has other creatures like gnomes, sprites, nymphs, etc. Sprites. You like that? Okay. 1,500 years ago, the Torre is built. And then Maeve arrives. This is based off of what we learned. She arrives at some point in this time. And then the keys are made and Athra leaves Goldrin. Remember, that is the sword that Aelin finds under the mountain. But then a thousand years, so we're moving closer to the present, the demon slash Valg Wars take place. Elena makes a deal with the gods to take Erwin back when the rightful heir, a.k.a. Aelin, comes along. Okay? And then 900 years ago, in Rifthold, there was a god of truth who was having people write sins on their bones. Now, or carve... You, you, it, they're carving bones, Okay? 
Keep in mind, he could have been there longer, but the date we have is 900 years, okay? Then 500 years ago, Mab is immoralized into godhood thanks to Maeve, and Mab becomes... Wait, did I put that right? Wait. Yep. It is Mab. Is the quiz right? I might have messed up the quiz. Well, if I messed it up, everyone gets that point. <laughs> okay. I'm like, that was one of the quiz answers. And I'm like, ah, I think I put more. Anyways. Uh, so then the witch kingdom falls and then Lorcan swears the blood oath to Maeve because that's all within 500 years. That's all within 500 years ago. Everyone keeping up. Hold on a second. I want to see if I, you might, you guys might've just got a freebie on the quiz. Let me check. Mm. Nope, you're good. Okay, we're good. Okay, this is just Throne of Glass. Does anyone have questions before we get to Akatar? Because Akatar is going to maybe hurt your brain a little more. So, and it's okay. This is recorded. This is recorded. Okay, does anyone have questions about the Throne of Glass timeline? The next slide is just literally says any questions. So I'm going to keep it on here because this is probably helpful. Um, uh, I don't know why, but I pictured the place Aelin found Gildred on top of a mountain. Honestly, yeah, that doesn't, I do, I do stuff like that all the time. So don't worry. I literally do the same thing. So please don't worry. Any questions about Throne of Glass? Any thoughts about what you've learned? Anything regarding Throne of Glass? Rowan did find the sword and he he threw it to Aelin. That is correct. Anything from, from Assassin's Blade? Great question. Why do you think that? So so I'm I'm glad someone caught there wasn't an Assassin's Blade uh, slide. No, not regarding ancient history. However, there's quite there is you're going to see Assassin's Blade pop up for creatures and uh, objects. So that is a good question. That is why there is not an Assassin's Blade slide. Uh, what about Rowan? Are we talking about him here? Rowan, Rowan is, he's, he's, he's a baby. He's not even on the slideshow. Um, Rowan is a little baby. Okay. Uh, the keys are made from a world walking. I missed that part somehow. The keys were made by the Valg from the word gate. That is not in this PowerPoint. That's going to be in the, um, mystical objects, but they were made from a world gate. Hi, Amber. <laughs> Uh, do we know the bird on Maeve's shoulder is? We don't. And that's such a good question. We do not. Uh, do, what does fey language mean? Is it word marks or just an old language? Why is it important? So the fey language is important because there is an old fey language in all three of the universes. Now, word, the, the language like word marks is not the fey language. That is a different language. And it's not even the ancient fey language that Emerus is discussing. Uh, when the ring is placed in the cave. Yes, so the ring was placed on top of Goldrin under the mountain in the cave 1,500, about 1,000 years ago. Uh, do we think the word... Okay, we're all good to theories. I'm just asking about this. Um, okay, let me see. These are great questions. Do we think the word... Okay, I'll get to that. Uh, doesn't Aelin assume the bird is Mora? She does not. She never makes that assumption. Was the fighting in the City of the Dead different than the Valgor? Based off of what I... I mean... It could potentially be the same thing. I, it's hard to tell. What's interesting is there's a little... I mean, the Tory was built 1,500 years ago. Brandon's Forest was 2,000 years ago. So Brandon, Maeve, Atherol, Anthrol, however you want to say his name. I just want to say, like, Anthrol, like an Anthrol. Um, and... Uh, like they were around. So maybe I it's it's hard to say. It's in, I mean they kind of line up. It could be the same. Um Okay. Was the fighting in the city in the Okay, we answered that. If the Fae was in the south, southern continent, where did you where did they go? I mean, I'm going to let you guys come up to that to that conclusion. Do we know what the Valg look like? They are parasitic. It is described um when 
it is described more specifically when Maeve is, I mean, the one that comes to the top of my head is the one when Maeve is killed um, at the end of Kingdom of Ash. So there's four languages to note. The Fey language, ancient Fey language, and word marks. Yes. In Throne of Glass, yes. Okay. Are we good? Are we good to move on to Akatar? I'm moving on to Akatar. Okay. A Court of Thorns and Roses. I always want to say it like that. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right. So <laughs> book one of Akatar, not a whole lot of information. Not surprising though. So a treaty with the humans in the High Fae was made over 500 years ago. This is pretty common knowledge. I think most of you guys know this. So this isn't like anything super crazy. Um, Okay, the Fae, and then in chapter five, Feyre says, Feyre brings up that it took the six human uh, queens to craft the treaty. I kind of forgot that. I kind of forgot it was like, sometimes I forget the human queens exist. I mean, I know Vass is there. She's the only one I really care about, but I forget that the rest of them exist. So that's why I put that in there. Um, then in chapter 13, Feyre is going through Tim Tam's house and she sees um, this this uh i think it's a tapestry and it says it began with a cauldron and i always feel like it needs to be read that way it makes me think of i don't know if anyone here is like an avatar the last airbender fan but it makes me think of like earth water fire wind long ago that's what it makes me think every time when i hear it began with a cauldron okay so it began with a cauldron and uh prithian was <laughs> so sorry i had to say that um okay the prithian was formed with a black cauldron held by glowing center female hands in a starry, endless night. It's very interesting. There's always star references to a lot of these gods, so I threw that in there. Um, it was not sparkling, but effervescent with small symbols. Hmm, wonder what those symbols were. Okay. All right. Uh, Feyre looks at the next panel, and it shows a bloody battle with thousands of human soldiers and facing Fey hordes. So the humans' arrows and swords seem so pointless against the high Fey and their glimmering armor, the fairies bristling with claws and fangs. I'm going to be honest, reading that, I don't know if those were actually Fae. I can't, I can't remember when I read this passage. It's chapter 13. I can't remember if Tamlin is there to clarify. But I, that's a little sus for me. I, I mean, it's, this is, keep in mind, this is Feyre's point of view. So like, claws and fangs? I mean, yeah, the High Lords have claws. But like, it's a little sus. Okay. Mist and Fury. So, Secret of Valeris. This is probably known by you guys, but the Valeris walls were protected and had not been breached in 5,000 years. By the way, for anyone who's wondering, when I read Mist and Fury, this is just a random fun fact, I always start when Fira gets trapped in Tamlin's house, and then I listen all the way to the Inner Circle meeting. So if I'm having like a really bad day, that's what I listen to, because I'm chaos, and I like to hear Fira trapped and more rescue her. So, in case anyone's wondering. Um... He's not there. Okay. Okay. So I, okay. I was like, I don't think he's there. Um, so back to what I was saying, Valeris's walls had been protected and had not been breached for 5,000 years, obviously until this book. Um, Amran's exile. Now, please tell me y'all are paying very close attention to Amran because after you read Hosab, y'all better be paying close attention to Amran. I will tell you when I, this is one of those like pat on the back things. I remember when we, I started Earth and Blood and people were like, what do you think is going to happen to Amra? And I said, we're going to find out in Crescent City. I remember saying that because of the angel stuff. So I'm quite, I'm still very proud of myself for that. Um, so Amra was exiled 10,000 years ago. And I'm, this is now for some of you might be like, what the hell? I'll show you in the timeline. It'll kind of make a little more sense. By the way, fact checked it with Avery, just in case anyone's wondering. I did fact check the timeline before I shared it with you guys. Um, and then when they find the one half of the Book of Breathings in chapter 37, um, Amran reveals that the language is not of this world. And I'm not going to try and say that because I don't know how to say it, but it's the Holy Tongue. And then I also Googled it because I was curious. And um, it's actually a real term and it's a Jewish term for the Hebrew language. So that's really fascinating that the, um, that the Book of Breathings is in Hebrew, which I think is like kind of cool. Um, then Reese elaborates and says, I heard a legend that it was written in a tongue of mighty beings who feared the cauldron's power and make the book to combat it. Might beings, um, who were there and then vanished. You were the only one who can encode it is what he says. Huh? I wonder who those beings are. 
Okay, anyways, moving on. Um, And then I just also wanted to put down here the Forgotten Island. This is the island that Miriam and Draken are from. That was hidden 500 years ago. That lines up with the treaty, with the war and everything. But I just wanted that also to be noted. A Court of Wings in Ruin. So this, I would say chapter 20 is a really good one to pay attention to in general with Wings in Ruin. Um, And this is about the Night Court's library. So this is the House of Wind library. So it says, before the priestesses, the library was filled with cranky old scholars who could find tomes dating back thousands of years. They were closely guarded and humans were rarely allowed in because the books were filled with magic and the Fae didn't want the humans to know. Scholars and librarians refused to keep slaves mainly because they didn't want anyone accessing the books. But Feyre then asks, which I think is a really good question, she says, But why? Because humans don't have magic. And Reese explains that some humans do um, some distant fate ancestry, but some of the spells don't require magic from a wielder, only the right words or to use the ingredients. So this is, it's kind of interesting. In chapter 22, this is when Cassian and Feyre go to the Bone Carver. Cassian tells Feyre that while they're at the prison, um, that there used to be life here. Then magic shifted to the High Fae, who brought the cauldron and the mother along with them. And then also, that's the wrong chapter title, by the way. I'm pretty sure. That's the wrong chapter. The Night Court Jewels is the wrong chapter. I'll clarify it. But Reese tells Feyre the High Lord's Troves, the night is uh, 10,000 years old. There's 10,000 years of treasure. Okay. Frost and Starlight. Yes, there's information in Frost and Starlight. I know. Shocking. It's not just Reese banging people, making paintings fall off the walls. Fun fact, this is also my mom's favorite book. Is that weird? Anyways. Um, so, Illyrian <laughs> Traditions. This is in Chapter 2. While in the Illyrian camps, Reese brings up that uh, some of the traditions in the camp haven't changed in, th- in thousands of years. Not shocking. Um, Illyrian legends. This is the thing. This is another one of my Roman Empire things once I figured this out. Okay. During this chapter, in Cassian's point of view, Cassian, my lovely, lovely general of the Night Court, who decides not to pay attention at the right moments to Reese, and it's fine, um, says while he's flying over Ramiel that... First off, Ramiel is awake and watchful, which is interesting. But he also says, legend said it had existed before the Night Court form, before the Illyrians migrated from... Myrmidons, Myrmidons, yep, before the humans had walked the earth. So the Illyrians know they're not Illyrian. The Illyrians know this. And it clarifies in this quote that that, the Myrmidons is between day and night. It's not even like up in the night court. It's like literally, it's like right there. So in case anyone's wondering, um, and then this is, everyone loves to bring up Moore's little house. Um, by the way, I always think it's in the winter court. It's not. It's in the night court. Um, but Moore shares that she bought the home, Athelwood, 300 years ago. Okay? And the home had come with six horses and was 300 acres northwest of Valeris in a land of rolling hills, bubbling streams, and an ancient forest with crashing seas. Even in these woods, ancient terrors had been known to emerge. So this is kind of some interesting stuff about where Moore's house is. I don't know if we're ever going to get more detail about this, but it's very fascinating to me. So moving right along, Silver Flames. Y'all can, of course, thank Avery for this one Um, because, you you know, I was like, Avery, I'm not going to try and outdo your knowledge. So you just tell me what I need to know. And she did. Okay, so remember that thing I read to you in Crown of Midnight about worlds on top of each other and didn't know it? Okay. Chapter 13 of Silver Flames. So this is when they're in the House of Wind Library and Gwen, Nesta asks Gwen what Meryl study. And she says, when she first came here, she was obsessed with theories regarding the existence of different realms and different worlds. Living on top of each other without even knowing it. Whether it was merely one existence, our existence, or if it might be possible for worlds to overlap, uh, overlap, occupying the same space, but separated by time and a whole bunch of other things. Then Nesta asks for more info and Gwen does elaborate. She says, some philosophers believe that there are 11 worlds like that. Some believe there are as many as 26 the last one being time itself. Now we know the 26 because of the harp. Okay. But same passage. Okay. Now the dread trove. I know I'm, if you're anything like me, I constantly call it the dead trove, but it's the dread trove. Avery has literally drilled that into me since we've been friends. Um, and this is in chapter 20. It says, when asked about the last time the trove was used, Amran said over 10,000 years ago. And then she later confirms that she has no memory of anyone using it. So even while she was in Perithian, she doesn't have memory of someone using the trove. But she knows the last time it was seen was or was, you know, 
was used was 10,000 years ago. So that's chapter 27 and chapter 20. Then the old language of the Fae. Now, someone was asking about languages. So after the Kelpie incident with Nesta, this is in chapter 37 of Silver Flames, Reese goes into Nesta's mind to find out more about the Kelpie. And Amran and Reese both recognize the language as an ancient language of the Fae. That is a dialect of our tongue that has not been spoken in 15,000 years, is the exact phrase. I think Reese says it. Reese or Amran says it. Amran says it in Hosab. I think Reese says it in Silver Flames. Um, now, the High King of Perithian. I'm hoping by now this is very clearly spoilers territory. Uh, so Cassie and Azrael, Reese and Amran in chapter 42 are looking at the weapons Nesta made. And during this time, the story of the High King is brought up. Once the High King or once the High Fae were more elemental, more given to reading the stars and crafting masterpieces of art, jewelry and weaponry. Their gifts were raw, more connected to nature, and they could imbue objects with that power. Well aware of the myths regarding the sword Gwydion, okay, it had belonged to a true High Fae King king of Perithian, as there had been in Highburn. He had united the lands, its people for a while, with that sword, peace had reigned, until he had been betrayed by his own queen and his fiercest general, and lost the sword to them. The lands fell into darkness once more, never to see another high king, only high lords, who ruled the territories that had once answered to a king. And then they, when asked if Nesta had created a new sword, Amran says, yes, only great powers could do that. So people do skip Silver Flames. People are like, I'm skipping Silver, Silver Flames. It's just a sex book. And I'm like, I'm sorry. We have four slides on Silver Flames. You want to tell me you're skipping it. Uh, the language on Lunathian. What for what? Unite the people. Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 15,000 year old legend. So we're continuing with the legend discussion. So after dealing with Lanthus, who we all think is Valg, but that's a theory. Okay, Cass and Nesta talk to Reese. And based off of what Lanthus said, Reese concludes that he is over 15,000 years old. But Nesta asks about the wild hunt. Now, I didn't go into a lot of depth about the wild hunt here because we'll do it in next month. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about this. So it said he flipped over a page revealing an image of a group of tall, strange looking beans with crowns on top of their heads. Sounds a little to me like the beans that Irene saw in Tower of Dawn, but I digress. The Fae were not the first masters of this world. According to the oldest legends, most new uh, forgotten. They were, we were created by beings who were near gods and monsters, the Daglin. They ruled for a millennia and enslaved us uh, and the humans. They were pr petty and cruel and drank the magic of the land like wine. I think saying drink the magic of the land like wine answers who we think they are. Reese reads on and says many myths believe that Finn, who was given Gwydion by the high priestess Olenna, so he was given the sword by Olenna, overthrew the Daglin. And it is said that Olenna dipped Gwydion into the cauldron itself. So a millennium of peace followed, but at the end of those thousand years, there was, uh, they were at each other's throats a brink of war, and Fen united them and set himself up above as the high king, the first and only king of his land, the first and only king this, this land has ever seen. When asked if Amran remembers this, Reese says, only vaguely, she arrived before Gwydion and Fen rose and went into the prison during the Age of Legends, the time when the land was full of heroic figures who were keen to hunt down the last members of their former master race. Okay, I know this is a lot of like, ooh, like thrown in your face. Don't worry, the timeline is hopefully gonna help clear that up. I just wanna make that very clear. Okay, Eris, ugh. I'm going to be honest, I want an Eris Redemption arc so bad. Okay, Eris says in Silver Flames in Chapter 62, he's talking to Cass and Nesta, and they're kind of meeting in the middle, essentially, and Eris makes some interesting comments about Ramiel. He asks Nesta if she's ever seen it, because she's kind of looking at uh, the night court, the mountains, and he says, there are three of them, you know, Sister Peaks. This one, the mountain called the prison. The one, the Illyrian brutes called Ramiel. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Ignore me. I was like typing really fast last night. <laughs> All bald, barren mountains at odds with those around them. We don't know why they exist, but do you not find it strange that two out of the three have underground palaces carved into them? Eris says he isn't surprised that the Illyrians were never curious enough to see what secrets lie beneath and see if it was carved by ancient hands. OK, because that's the only mountain we really haven't gone under. We've gone under the other two. Why are we not going under 
Ramiel. I don't know. Okay, so the tale of Annalis, Annalis, whatever. He, so Emery explains in 68 that long ago, so long ago, there isn't a precise date for it. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, a great war was fought between the Fae and the ancient beings who were oppressed by them. One of the key battles was here. In these mountains, our forces were battered and outnumbered, and for some reason, the enemies was desperate to reach the stone at the top of Ramiel. They were taught the reason why. They were never taught the reason why. I think it was forgotten. But a young Illyrian warrior named Manalis held the line against the enemy soldiers for days. He fought the natural archway of stone amongst the tangle of boulders and made it. Pa- uh, and made that his bottleneck. He died in the end. The right is to honor him. So much of history has been lost, but the memory of his bravery remains. So this is the history of why the right exists. Everyone following me on that. The other mountain. Yeah. So there's the mountain in the middle. There is the mountain in Illyria. And then there's the prison. Those are the three mountains. Now, I am not going to elaborate more on that because this is an Avery theory. Avery has the three sisters, three mountains theory. And like, your girl knows, probably not me who should elaborate on that. But anyways, okay, this timeline was probably one of the more confusing timelines to work on. So let me clarify some things. So the ones with the photos, these are confirmed things. And then everything else I kind of pieced together based off of the knowledge. Avery was on the phone with me for like 40 minutes while we did this. Okay, so 16,000 years ago. Yes, 16,000, not 15,000. The Daglin ruled for 1,000 years. Okay, so the, well, let's be honest, the Asteri. Let's be honest, it's the Asteri. I, I mean, that's kind of a theory. It's not confirmed, but like it's... They're draining the magic. Okay, just saying. All right, 16, they ruled for 1,000 years. Amrit arrives during that time, okay? Finn is gifted Gwydion by the high priestess Elena, and he overthrows the Daglet. So that's, a, so that's in that time period. Then 16,000 years ago, Finn becomes high king. So he's given Gwydion before he's high king, okay? Okay, so that is... Uh, thing. Wait, I want to hear. Yeah, go talk to Avery about that one (laughs) since pinned on her TikTok. Okay. All right. Then Amron is put into the prison shortly after High King Finn becomes the High King. Okay. Then 1,000 years he rules. Okay. High King Finn rules for 1,000 years. And then 15,000 years ago, he's betrayed by the queen, by his queen and his general, who we know is Queen Thea, and Prince Peleus, but anyways. And then the High King Lord's rule. Then Lanthus arrives. <laughs> Always late to the party. Lanthus arrives around this time. The Dread Trove is lost 10,000 years ago. Then 5,000 years ago is the last time Valeris was ever breached. Then Reese Cass- uh, Eris, Reese, Cassie, and Azrael Moore are all born like 500 years ago. And then exactly 500 years ago, the treaty's made. Is that, does anyone have questions about Akatar? This one was a more complicated one. I promise Crescent City is a lot easier. <laughs> Any questions about Akatar? So what are the Illyrians called originally? They don't actually know. They just call them. I mean, even Cassian calls himself an Illyrian. Lanthus is the guy in the prison that tells Nessa she's a queen and he's the one, he has black blood, okay? I'm confused if the sword was forged because of CC or made by the cauldron or just uh, dipped into it. It was forged in Perithian. So the only reason it's in CC is because it was brought over by Prince Pallius and Queen Thea. The sword was dipped into the cauldron, but that's a great question. How do we know when Lanthus got there? So based off of Reese's assumption, he says about 15,000 years ago, but we also know he wasn't in the prison for that long because Cassian's the one that put him in the prison. So that is why he's there. I have questions between the 15,000 years and the 500 plus years that Cassian put him in there. I don't know. I don't know what, what High King, I don't know what Lanthus was doing for about 15, 14,500 14, years. I don't know what Lanthus was doing. I have questions. I want to know why the queen betrayed Finn and why she left. It's you'll hear what the Crescent City folks think. Right. 
So Lanthus is Valk. That's the assumption by the fandom because he is black blood. That is the assumption that most people make. He was chilling like a villain. <laughs> yeah, basically. That was basically what he was doing. <laughs> it's a very popular theory, but it is not canon. I want to make that very clear. The reason people think Lanthus is Valg is because he has black blood. And based off of some of the things he says to Nesta, it feels very similar to like Maeve and, and the Valg Kings. But it there's still some holes in that. So, uh, so I just want to make that note. I want to know more about the wild hunt. I will, we will talk about the wild hunt in next month. Cause that's the fantastic bean. So we'll talk about that for sure. I actually saved a lot of the quotes for that. Um, do we know when the bone carver was locked up? <sighs> I think so. I don't think we know the exact date. I just know he's been locked up for a while. I do know I saw it and thought, should I put that in this? And I decided not to because I wanted to save that for to talk about all the death gods. Um, it's interesting that the truth teller isn't mentioned much in the lore of the High King. I would agree. I find that very interesting that he is not mentioned. Is there currently any other beings with black blood? Yes, um, there are. And I think that's like... Um, the Crystallis demon? No, the clear blood. One of the demons in Crescent City had black blood. I feel like this is the only fandom where someone bleeds and we all go, okay, what color is the blood? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I just want, yes, I purposely left out stuff about the bone carver because I figured we'd talk about him next month. So don't worry. Uh, he says before Koshe and yes, we're locked in their areas, but I don't think, yeah. Uh, was he already locked? Yes, he was. Uh, we will talk about the Wild Hunt next month. I know. Do we think the Wild Hunt has something to do with the legends that have her in Germany for the Wild Hunt? I think the Wild Hunt is more having to do with, like, is it Norse mythology? Yeah, Norse has the Wild Hunt. And then Arthurian legend. There's a lot of Arthurian legend being kind of brought up right now. Or, like, in general. Okay. Moving on to House of Earth and Blood. Welsh. Thank you, Lucy. Okay. So Lunathian's founding. This is, oh, I didn't put the, the, the thing here for this, but, uh, Luna's horn is brought up in, uh, I think it's 14. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys if anyone is curious. So, uh, Lunathian's founding. Did anyone know that Lunathian was founded? Oh, it was in chapter 21. I did put the chapter. Good job, Sarah. Okay. And while they're in touring Luna's temple, Rune overhears that L Lunathian was founded 500 years ago. I had no idea. I thought it was like 15,000. No, 500 years ago. Do you know who else is also 500 years old? The Autumn King. Anyways, moving on. Uh, okay. So Luna's horn. History time. Think about what you just learned. Okay. Luna's horn was a weapon wielded by Peleus, the first starborn prince. During the first wars, the Fae forged it in their home world, named it for a goddess in their new one, and used it to battle the demon hordes once they made the crossing. Peleus wielded the horn until he died. Rune put his hand on his chest. My ancestor, whose power flows through my veins, I don't know how it worked, how Peleus used it with his magic, but the horn became enough of a nuisance for the demon princes that they did everything they could to retrieve it from him. And then the star our eater himself bred a new horde just to hunt the horn using some blood he managed to spill from prince Peleus on the battlefield and his own terrible essence the beast twisted out of a collision of light and darkness so we are learning that the horn came from another world it did not come from lunathian he brought it over they gifted it to a goddess of this world okay like meaning it's it's patron you know and they used it to fight demons in this world. Okay. Now going on to chapter 29, this is when Rune is in Anti Griffin Antiquities. So it says Bryce Hunt and Rune are researching the Fae. And during the research, Rune finds a passage about Prince Peleus and Lady Helena. This is super interesting. Okay. Because Rune mentions, and it says it right here, but I didn't realize Prince Peleus was actually a high general for the Fae queen named Thea when they entered this world. Rune doesn't know that. He doesn't know that information. He's learning that from the library in Griffin Antiquities. Rune goes on to conclude that Thea was starborn and her two daughters both possess the same gift, but only Lady Helena is mentioned. Okay. 
We're going to get back to the second daughter. Don't worry. Then Rune makes a comment about the Fae declining. Basically, he says, yeah, the Fae have been declining according to him, meaning the Autumn King, for the past several thousand years. He claims our ancestors could burn entire forests with ash with half a thought, while he can probably touch torch a grove and not much more. It drives him nuts that my chosen one powers are barely more than a kernel. Okay, Moving on to chapter 75. This is the summit chapter. During the summit, Hypaxia. Oh, I spelled her name wrong. This is what happens when I type really fast. Hypaxia brings up the war where the kelp beds were destroyed 2,000 years ago. So there was a war. We don't know anything. That's the name of it. Sorvacana, Sorvacane, Sorvac, whatever. You don't want me to pronounce that. I will butcher it. Um, That was 2,000 years ago. I don't know. I mean, literally, if you look that up, I, I couldn't tell you anymore about it. Okay. Now, human history is really interesting. So this is when Micah is with Bryce, and it says, while cornering Bryce, Micah shares that he believes this is the Library of Parthos and that it contains a record of 2,000 years of human knowledge before the Assyria arrived. 2,000 years of human knowledge, people. Okay, now we are on to House of Sky and Breath. Final book. We got this. Final book. Okay. So Fae Archives of the tr- like the Trove. Okay. So this is chapter one. So in the first chapter, Bryce brings up that the Fey Archives have a trove of ancient objects. The private wing of the Fey Archives housed a trove of ancient artifacts that had barely been so, uh, that had been sorely neglected for centuries. We love that. Good job, Autumn King. Okay, then the Starborn rival. So in chapter 25, Rune and the Autumn King are discussing Bryce and the Starborn line and the Autumn King. Oh, that's the wrong chapter. I'll clarify. I'll fix these chapters. Don't worry, just ignore the chapters. Just blank them out, okay? Um, chapter twenty five is right about the Aedas info. So uh, in ancient times, Starbar rivals would slit each other's throats, even those of the children. Moving on to Aedas, I put it in parentheses because we all know that's not Aedas. We all learned that. We all learned that it's Regulus. But anyways, Aedas, aka Regulus, gives some important details about Queen Thea. This is what sent Avery down a spiral. Are you guys ready? So it says Aedas said that Thea had another daughter. We know it's the younger daughter, but she vanished into the night, and I never learned of her fate. That's the exact quote. She vanished into the night. What the hell does that mean? Because I only think of one thing when I hear night. The youngest daughter vanished into the night. Literally type it in. You're going to find you. You type it in. You will find it. Okay. And then it says Helena, who is the older sister, okay, is described as night-haired Helena who, from whose golden skin poured starlight and shadows. Rune says this, night-haired Helena from whose golden skin poured starlight and shadows. Now keep in mind, it wouldn't be Reese's mother. That's too far back. This is 15,000 years ago. Okay, Adis also confirms that history is all but erased Thea's history. So, and the only person who has the truth is Jezeba, and that's in the library of Parthos. People died so you could have this power. People have been dying in this battle for 15,000 years so we could reach this point. Don't be the, don't play the reluctant hero now. That is the cliche. So history has basically erased who Queen Thea is, and that's on purpose. I wouldn't say it's Maeve. I would just say it's someone from the night court would be my theory, but I'm not, again, we're just, we're just talking canon. We're not talking theories. Okay. Fendir line chapter 41. Okay. So Bryce comes to the Fendir family tree and they find the first Fendir, her name's, uh, I would say Katra from 5,000 years ago. So that isn't, so, so the first Fendir was, was found on a family tree 5,000 years ago. Okay. Okay, then we get to the beneath, okay? While in the submarine, okay, Bryce brings up the Jezeba regarding the beneath. She said, I used to work in Griffin Antiquities and my boss once brought in a statue of a second city. I always thought she was fudging the dates, but she said it was almost 15,000 years old, that it came from the original beneath, as old as the Myste- as old as the Asteri, or at least the arrival of Midgard. And then I also wanted to quickly point out that this statue was actually brought up in House of Earth and Blood in chapter 34. So a little fun fact for you is that it is brought up. 
Okay. The Asteri then conquered. I honestly was not going to put all the dates in here and all the different planets. I'm just telling y'all to go to chapter 72. Okay. Chapter 72, the Asteri conquered. Just highly recommend rereading the chapter. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, last slide about Bryce's ancestors. Are you ready? So, he, this is Regulus. Your ancestors wielded the horn and another fey object that allowed them to enter this world. Stolen, of course, from their original masters, our people. Our people who built fearsome warriors in that world to be their army. All of them prototypes for the angels in this one. All of them traitors to their creators, joining the fey to overthrow my brothers and sisters a thousand years before we arrived in Midgard. They slew my siblings. Now, doesn't this seem like it lines up with the Akatar? I'm just trying to get y'all to... Connect the dots, okay? Now, Rygulus goes on to say that Thea figured out, she, but she figured it out too late. Your starborn ancestors shut the gates to stop us from invading their realm once more and reminding them who their true masters are. And in the process, they shut the gates to all other worlds, including those to hell, their stal stalwart allies. And so we have been trapped here, cut off from the cosmos. Okay, 15,000 years later, meaning... Now we're in Valeris again in the townhouse, and we know it's the townhouse based off of the description and comparing it to Mist and Fury. So when Bryce asks, speaks in the old language of the Fae, Amarin is shocked and says no one has spoken that language in 15,000 years. Okay, I will, if, now I see we have some questions about the, the Queen Helena, and I will tell you what my conclusion is, but I just wanted to read all of this. So, Crescent City family tree, or sorry, timeline, not family tree, Crescent City timeline. 17,000 years ago, Midgard is just a planet of humans. It is just humans. That's all it is. Okay. Then 15,000 years ago, we get to the crossing. We all know this. This is, this is very obvious. The library Parthos is hidden around that 15,000 year mark. Okay. Then 5,000 years ago, the first Fendir is born. Then the war in the water court was 2,000 years ago. Then a thousand years ago, the Fae began to decline, although he says thousands of years, so it could be anywhere from five to, you know, we don't know. I just put it there as a marker. Then 500 years ago, Lunathi is founded, and then the Angel Rebellion, for anyone wondering, it wasn't in the slideshow, but that was 200 years ago. Okay. Any questions about Crescent City? Because then we have the quiz. <laughs> I promise it's not as intimidating as you think. I think you guys are going to do well. Don't worry. CZ breaks my brain. The best way I can, this is the way I think of it. And I don't know if this helps anyone. When you think of Crescent City, think of it being like the last puzzle piece. Okay. It's not the first one. It's not the foundation. It's the last puzzle piece. Your first puzzle piece is probably Perithian. And then some of the, like, I would say your corner pieces on a puzzle are like Terracin. That's like Aurelia. Okay, but your meat and potatoes are Prithium. That's like the big chunk. Okay, then your final pieces, the ones that you can't figure out where the hell they fit, that's Lunathian. So really, the, the Prithium one is probably the more important one to really pay attention to. The, the Aurelia one is important for the edges. It kind of helps feed it. But the longest timeline we have is really Perithian and Lunathian. The Fendiers, that's Danica. That's Danica's family. I need to sit and think. I'm lost too. Okay, what can I help clarify? It's okay if you're lost. It is okay if you're lost. I'm happy to clarify. <laughs> it's okay. There's a lot of information. I know. This is this is a lot to soak in. And this is all from what you read. Uh, when you said the dots, what dots? My brain broke. The dots meaning, I would say, so like if you were to, if we were to put all three timelines together, this is probably the one that is most important. Like really, you kind of want to put this one and this one kind of together because they're essentially the same thing. Okay, they're kind of like here. You know what? Let's do it like this. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to, this is why we have the whiteboard. Okay. So if we're going to look at a timeline, hopefully this helps. Okay. So if we're going to look at a timeline, all right. So let's pretend this is a puzzle. Okay. Let's pretend this is a puzzle. Uh, okay. So if we look at a puzzle, 
Okay, so I would say Terrison is your green. Okay, it's it's the edges. There's not a whole lot. If you looked at it, it was like the latest something went back was 2000 years. Okay, it's nothing like super, 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 super pressing. Okay, so it was like, it's all kind of right here. It's all it's all your edges. Okay, so if you're looking thinking of a puzzle, I don't know if anyone does puzzles. I rarely do. But when I do a puzzle, I try to do the edges first because the corner pieces are the easiest. There's there's always a flat edge. Terracin is kind of this. Okay, is it the most important thing? It hurts my soul to say this, no, but it does have a lot of really good information. But the oldest information in there is like 2,000 years old. Nothing super, super, super ancient. So it's your edges, okay? Um, okay. All right. Now, if I, and I'll, I'll get to some of the questions. I'm just trying to explain this really quick, okay? Now, if we get to the, the, the Akatar stuff, okay? So the Akatar is kind of like your meat and potatoes because it has some like kind of interesting stuff that's starting to make a little more sense. So that's kind of like your middle pieces, okay? That's why it's purple, okay? So this is like, oh yeah, there's a random piece here. Oh yeah, this connects and there's a random piece here. Oh yeah, this connects. But I always have like a big middle space whenever you do a puzzle. There's always like two or three pieces that got lost in the box that you're like, holy crap, did I lose the box? It's not making sense. Like, I don't understand, blah, 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 okay? That is your Crescent City. So that is your Crescent City because that takes all this information you've learned and that puts it like, oh, now it's starting to fill in the spaces. So now my puzzle is starting to get filled in. Does that make sense? Does this make sense? I hope this makes sense. Okay, while I'm holding this up, I'm going to read some things. I connected the dots with the languages. My brain is now spiraling about Thea's missing daughter. Yes. Didn't we discover that the Fandir line and the Wolf Shifters are also Fey? Yes. Yes. Did the uh, did they come over to the same time as the other Fey? Yes. So the the all shifters are another Fey line from Fey who are constantly shifting. I wonder who that could be. Okay. So that is your puzzle piece. I can do that. I can put the timelines on top of each other. Okay. Does this help? <laughs> so that, that's all I was trying to do. Okay. Really? You guys are gonna do, you guys are, I don't, don't theory spiral yet about the daughter. Don't theory spiral yet. But it is a little sus to me that it's, she vanished into the night according to Regulus, AKA Adis, who's actually Regulus. Okay, do we need another minute? Are you guys ready for the quiz? <laughs> Are you ready for the quiz? Fendir Whitethorn. I would say Fendir, I would say Fendir Fenris, not Fendir Whitethorn. I would think Fendir Moonbeam. All right, quiz time. You guys ready? You guys are gonna do great. You guys are totally gonna do great. Okay, so everyone go to Slido. I'm gonna give you guys time to join the quiz, okay? So you go ahead and join. I was gonna do a prize, but everyone seems stressed, so it's okay. We will do prizes next time. I have plenty of prizes, so we'll do prizes for Fantastic Beans, okay? So don't worry, okay? We'll do prizes for Fantastic Beans. This is just a test, okay? The Wolf Tribe of Terrison, yes. Okay, I see some people are coming in as masterclass. Just just come in as like your name. What is the difference between the Valg and the Asteri? Um, if you ask me, I think the Asteri are scarier than the Valg. I we will spiral about the daughter at the end of the quiz. It's fit now the quiz is like 17 questions. There's a bonus question. It's not in the PowerPoint, but you guys know it. It's kind of like a throwaway, okay? Okay, I'm going to give you guys time to join. We don't know the color of the blood of the Asteria. It's, I, it's a question I've been asking for since like day one. I'm like, can I see someone bleed? Can I see an Asteria bleed, please? Because that would be nice. <laughs> So is the Sun Eater, is he one of the nine? I would say the Sun Eater is the Bone Carver. That is my personal theory. That is not canon information. But I find it sus that there's two bone carving creatures in two different universes. 
That would be my opinion. Okay. I got 127 people. I have 196 that are watching. Okay, I got 130, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep waiting. I'm going to keep waiting. Keep in mind the quiz is, um, it is multiple choice. There are some tricks, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Everything you just learned. Okay. I just swallowed a lemon seed. Excuse me. That was gross. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? Is anyone, I'm going to give it a few more seconds. I'm going to give it till the 15. Okay. So we're at the third, I'm at the 13 right now. Cause I got 30, 136, 137. It looks like there's 196. I'm going to give it a minute. Thank y'all for coming. Also, we do have some stock left of the Masterclass merch, and it's in the link in my bio. If y'all want to buy your Masterclass t-shirt or sweatshirt or your alumni of Perithian to Lunathian or Terrison, I have a link. You guys should go check it out. It's, it supports me because, you know, I have a lot of fun with this. Okay. Are we ready? We got another minute left, and then I'm going to start it. So you have last call, last call. Last call. You guys got this. Last call. We have another minute left. Once it turns 15, I'm going to start it. I know. We got to get more people reading MKR. Because we could get... Y'all think we get hard in this. Oh, you should see me with Melissa's books. Okay. Are you guys ready? All right. Brandon's forest is estimated to be how old? 500 years old, 1,000, or 2,000 years old? We did go over this. This was in Throne of Glass, if that's helpful. It's in Book 1 of Throne of Glass. It's one of the first things we learned. I don't know about y'all, but the first time I read Throne of Glass, I was like, God, this book is boring. Then I go back and I reread it, and it's so fascinating. MKR is Melissa K. Rorick. I don't have them upstairs. I have them downstairs. But they're my fav they're my new favorites. Okay, Brandon's Forest is estimated to be how old? The Lady of Darkness series and the Legacy series. That's the other series. All right, I got about 20-ish more people. A little less than 20. Brandon's Forest is estimated to be how old? This was in Throne of Glass. This is specifically in when um, they're going through the forest. This is when the little folk, the little folk appear for Aelin. Currently reading book two of Lady of Darkness and I'm in love. Oh, bestie, wait till you get more into it. I, it's so good. It's so, 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 so good. Okay. I'm very, we're very much obsessed. I should get, yeah. We have a Lady of Darkness channel in the Discord. Melissa's a good friend of mine at this point. I text her pretty much almost every day. All right, I just got a few more of you. I got about seven more people. 500, 1,000, 2,000 years old. Can we get merch? You guys want, do you guys want Lady of Darkness merch? 80% through Starfire. My mom did that. She, she kept Starfire like on her bookshelf for so long. And I was like, mom, you got to finish it. She's like, I can't. She's deeply obsessed. Okay, I got a few more. A few more before I'm going to go. Okay, we ready? Last call, last call. Come on, come on. We got six people. We got seven. Wait, I can't do the math. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Five people. We have five people. I'm going to go. Okay, you guys said, so 4% of you said five. 100, 9% uh, said 1,000, 87% said 2,000, and I'm so proud of you because the correct answer was 2,000 years. So proud, so proud. Look at you guys. See, 
You got this. Okay, fill in the blank. This is from Throne of Glass, okay? The word governs and forms the foundation of this world, not just blank, but all life. Was it Aurelia, Terrace, and Mirrors? The word governs and forms the foundation of this world, not just Terrison, but all life. Not just Aurelia, but all life. Not just mirrors, but all life. Because you know who says this? Bobby L. Likes. That's why. That's why. That's why I said it. The word governs. I feel like every time, again, when we were saying it started with a culture, it's the same thing with the word governs. The word, the word governs. The found and forms the foundation of this world. Not just, but all life. I feel like it needs to be said like that. Okay. All right. Come on, come on, come on. What are you thinking? You, you know the answer. Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Here, let's see what does TikTok look at like. Tiki Taki, here. You can have this. There you go. You can you, you can participate or you can watch too, Tiki Taki. All right. Honestly, how I read in all things there must be a balance in MKR. I wonder if she knows we do do you do you guys use that a lot, MKR? I just call her Melissa. Every time I'm like, well, Melissa's book. You say we know the answer, but I'm bad at test taking. So am I. So am I. So don't worry. I'm not trying to trick you. I mean, I am in some questions, but this is not one. The word forms. The word governs and forms the foundation of this world. Not just, but all life. Okay. I'm at 37 again. Coffee tumblers, <laughs> water bottles, vinyl stickers. Okay. Okay. I should take a screenshot of this and send it to Melissa. <laughs> Let's see, is she on right now? Or is Britt on? Britt might be on. No. No, she's not. <laughs> okay, all right, you ready? Okay, so 88% of you said Terrison, or 88% of you said Aurelia. 5% said Terrison, 7% said Mirrors. The correct answer was Aurelia. You did good. Uh, good job, everyone. You paid attention. I'm proud. Okay, true or false? This was the one that I tripped up. Remember? Mora is immortalized into godhood thanks to Maeve. True or false? Think about it. Who was immortalized? I might have tripped you guys up on this one, so I apologize if I did. Okay. This is kind of a freebie, so don't, so don't, so don't think about that. She earned initial status when I say Melissa too. <laughs> Let me, I'm gonna message her. That's <laughs> so funny. Uh, all right. True or false? Mora. Remember, there's Mora and Mab. Those are your two goddesses. It's not Mala. Mala or, or Mora and Mab are your two fae. The goddess was Mala. So it's Mora or Mab. Which one was it? Which one was immortalized into godhood? You know the answer. I might have tripped you up, but you know the answer. I know. There's a lot of M names. I get tripped up too, so I totally get it. What keyboard do I use? I use an Elgato. It's a gaming keyboard. Um, you want to know something really funny? And this is like not talked about enough is I, you guys sometimes see that I wear um, acrylics. I don't actually wear acrylics. I wear hard gel nails. I have extensions and I was very picky about my keyboard because um, high acrylics. So like, you know, I, my nails would get caught in the keys when I would play video games. So I can tell you guys what the keyboard is, but this is an Elgato or this is a uh, Logitech what does it say? It's dirty. It needs to be washed. It's a Logitech. I have the clicky keys for anyone wondering. I have the clicky keys. Okay. True or false? 25% of you said true. 75% of you said false. The correct answer is false. It was Mab. Mab is Aelin. Mora is Rowan. That's how I keep them apart. Rowan, Mora. Mab, Aelin. Mora, R, Rowan. That's how I keep them. Okay. 
What is the age of the oldest carved bones? Aelin, Adian, and Rowan find under the tunnels. Is it 500, 900, or 1,500 years old? I hate tippy taps. I love a good. It does change colors. My keyboard does change colors too. You can actually really like go crazy. Tomorrow I get my new computer. My new computer's being made tomorrow. <gasps> you guys, I'm so excited. I feel like I need to make a TikTok about it. It's like so cute. And I'm getting a new desk tomorrow. I'm in a like, I'm very, very, very excited about it. I'm getting a standing desk. I'm very, very excited. So sometimes you guys might see me standing during these lives. <laughs> you guys have no idea. I'm very short for anyone who doesn't know this. Does do you like it always surprises people when they meet me or when they see me, but I am um I'm under five feet, actually. I'm 4'11. And so I'm very short. And so my feet don't touch the ground on pretty much anything. And so my back hurts when I sit at my desk for too long. So I'm getting a standing desk. Um, it is Christmas. I'm kind of treating myself. I didn't get the massage like I told you guys I would. I will I will get a massage maybe next weekend. Maybe next weekend. But I didn't get the massage. But instead, I'm treating myself to a desk and a new computer. <laughs> I'm playing Boulder Skate tonight. <laughs> Probably with the mods listening. <laughs> It rained on last. Yes. I do need to get a pedicure. I would actually love a back massage. I don't have time tomorrow. But, oh, it would be nice. Okay. Are you ready? All right. So, 500 years ago, 2% of you, 2% said of you, whoa, words are hard for me right now. 2% of you said that. 900 years, 78%. 1,500 years, 20%. The correct answer was 900 years. I'm very proud of you. Okay. What were the Valg doing when the in the first when they were in the first continent? What were the Valg doing when they first? Ah, this question is worded weird. Let me just read it to you. What were the Valg doing in the southern continent? That's what I was trying to say. When they first arrived in the southern continent. So this isn't what they were doing in Tower of Dawn. Meaning, this isn't what they were doing, like, with Irene and all of that. That's not. That's not what the answer. This is ancient history. This isn't current Tower of Dawn status. This is ancient history. So what were they doing? Okay. So this isn't current. This is ancient. I want to make that very clear. So what were, what were the Valg doing when they first arrived in the Southern Continent? Ignore the way that question's worded. It's crappy. But you guys know the answer. Maybe I'll get a pedicure this weekend. That sounds like a good idea. I'm taking off these headphones. They seem kind of ridiculous now. I'm just hearing myself talk. Okay. How are we doing, people? Okay, I got 133. I need about 17. Oh, someone joined. 17 of you. I'm going to give you like one more minute because we're not, we got, we got to get to Axar and Crescent City. So I'm going to give you one more minute. Let's see. Were they murdering the healers, conquering the land for Maeve or just assessing? We talked about this. We actually spent a good chunk of time talking about this and I did that on purpose. Let's see who was paying attention. Let's see, let's see. I feel like I need the like, da, da, da. I don't want to get copyright strike on YouTube, but you know. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. So get your last, last 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds. Put it in baby, 30 seconds. How about this? I'll do a timer on my phone. Does that make you guys feel better? Like a minute for each question. Okay, ready? Okay. Were they murdering the healers, conquering the land, or assessing? 89% of you. Good job. Look at you guys. Killing it. Killing it. Okay. All right. I go faster. All right. I'm going faster. I'm going faster. Okay. 
Who does Maeve contact to teach her how to world walk? Is it the World Walkers organization? An unknown wayfarer or the Val Kings? All right, timer starts for two. I'm going to do one minute and 30 seconds, okay? One minute and 30 seconds starting now. You got one minute and 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, it is flipped. I was like, my camera should be flipped up there. It is. Do, do. That's generous. Listen, last time I was told, because there is a delay, so I want to be cautious of the fact that there is like a seven second YouTube delay. So I'm trying to be cautious of that. Okay. So I'm trying to be like respectful of the fact that there is somewhat of a delay. Also, I'm a slow test taker. So I feel for the people who are slow test takers. Okay. How we do it? We at the halfway mark. You got 45 seconds, people. You got this. You know this answer. Who, who did Maeve contact? Who did she contact? Who did Maeve contact? She contacted someone. Who did she contact? We got 18, 15, 17, 16, 15. You got it. You got it. You got it. You're doing great. 10 seconds on the clock. Just put in an answer. You got this. You know this. We do have a from Blood Nash Zoom tomorrow. Okay. Let's see. What did you guys say? One person of you said the World Walkers organization, the Val Kinks, an unknown wayfarer. The correct answer was an unknown wayfarer, which is kind of interesting that she used that phrasing, but she did. All right. This is our leaderboard. Look at that. Christy's killing it. Caitlin, Allison, Kimberly, and Gina. Nice job. Okay, you guys ready for the Akatar section? By the way, Avery was like, the Throne of Glass section was hard. And I was like, well, you didn't see the PowerPoint. Okay. The treaty between the humans and the Fae. I'm going to give you guys one minute on this one because you guys know this one. The treaty between the humans... And the Fae, which resulted in the wall being created, was, was, was created when? Meaning, when did this treaty happen? You guys know the answer to this. You have one minute. One minute on the clock. You know this one. This is, this is an easy one. And I'm saying that because how many times is this mentioned in this damn book? This is like one of the things that's mentioned quite a bit. You guys know this. But yes, we do have from Blood and Ash Zoom. It's going to be pretty casual, just so you guys know. There's a possibility I might be doing it mobily from a phone or something because um, my friend is coming over to build my computer. I might have to drive him home, so I might have to join you guys from my phone. But it's fine. It's fine. We're going to make it work. I promised you I'd make it work. But I need my computer built because it has to be built by this week. Otherwise, the warranty is, like, is kind of going out on some of these parts, and I need it built. So that's why it's, it's kind of a priority. Okay, you have 10 seconds. 10 seconds. You guys got this. You know this answer. You know it. I know you do. Six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's see. What did you guys say? 3% of you said 300. 2% said 400. The correct answer was 500. Good job. How long was Amron in the prison? Kind of a trick. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Okay, I'm going back. Sorry. One minute on the clock. How do the Zoom sessions work? They're super casual. They're just general discussions. We just talk about it. That's all we do. I give you guys some background knowledge for anyone who was like not a part of the fandom early on because these are now books that I was like really in the fandom on. So I give you guys some background knowledge. That's all it is. It's just some fun, casual conversation. Okay, 40 seconds on the clock. How we doing? How we doing? How we feel it? We got 25 seconds. Fifteen. Ten. Um. All right. What am I currently reading? Something really smutty. <laughs> 10,000 years, 5,000 years, 15,000. The correct answer was 10,000. Good job. Okay. Uh, what is the name of the priestess who gives High King Fen Gwydion? What is the name of the priestess? We did say her name. Was it Meryl, Olena, or Gwydion? 
Uh, the Zoom's links are in Discord. So we, we pre I mean, we pretty much live in Discord. So if y'all aren't in Discord, I highly recommend it. Um, we do a lot of stuff, obviously, for Sarah J. Mass. We do have a series pick for next year, which is very exciting. Um, so we will, when you, if you go, if you're worried about what the hell you're going to read post Flame and Shadow, I already have that picked out for you. Um, but the link in Discord is in my link in the bio on, on YouTube. Um, and for anyone on TikTok, my Discord link is um, on my profile. So those are those are the places. And you should join. It's a great place. I will definitely give you chaotic updates. That's kind of my thing. Have you announced what we're reading next year? I have not. I'll announce it at the end of this year. I don't try I try not to announce it now because I don't want you guys to like pick it up. I mean, if you if you read it now, it's not a big deal. But it is one that I would rather us all read together. Um oh whoops. Okay. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Looks like most of you guys have answered. The correct answer was Elena. The correct answer was Elena. Okay. In Gwen says in Silver Flame, some philosophers believe that there are 11 worlds like that. And some believe that there are as many as blank. The last one being time itself. What was the number that Gwen says? Was it 26, 36, 38? <laughs> but I will announce before uh, Flame and Shadow comes out. Just so you know. Um, but I'm very excited. It's going to be a little different than the mass read along, which is very, very cool. We're going to have some really cool interactions. Um, and you guys are really going to love it. So some philosophers believe that there are 11 worlds like that. Some believe that there are as many as blank. The last one being time itself. I'm going to see if we can get about five more people in. Oh, 28. There we go. Can we get it to 30? Yeah. Can we get it to 35? Let's see if we can get it to 35 and 30 seconds. I'm looking at the clock. Uh, I'm great with years, but numbers don't stick. Does it help for anyone who's stuck? Does it help if I say it's the same number as the strings on the harp? Does that help some of you? You know the answer. I promise you know the answer. I did give this quiz to Avery. You mentioned the speech of different realms. Let's see. Okay. Some philosophers believe that there are 11 worlds like that. And some believe that there are as many as 26. That is the correct answer. Um, okay. True or false. According to Amron, the trove was last used 10,000 years ago. Is that true or false? Uh, how many books does that series uh, that hasn't been announced yet in it? I won't tell you how many books because it might give it away. But I will tell you this, that... We will most likely start it in April or May, and we're going to go until August. So we're going to, it's, we're kind of looking at a spring timeline. So the plan is because I, I know how, you know, the Sarah J. Mass fandom works. So we're going to probably give you guys Jan December, January, February, and pretty much March is all for Sarah, half of March. We're going to give you guys a really fluffy, potentially like a rom-com standalone book in March. It's it's just going to be something really, really fluffy to get everyone's brain off of what we're all reading. And then we will dive into the series because I think that's kind of the best thing. Um, because I think we all need a nice palate cleanser before we read, a, after reading a Sarah J. Mass book. So that is the plan, is that we're going to give you something that is a palate cleanser and then we'll dive into the series pick. Ice Planet Barbarians. No, but that would be a good palate cleanser. I love a good smutty book as a palate cleanser. That's kind of why I'm on a smutty kick. I need a, a palate cleanser. Okay. Um, so you guys will have a little, but you will know with what the series pick is prior to us getting, you'll know before the year starts. Um, but yes. True or false? According to Amron, the trove was used 10,000 years ago. True or false? True. Ooh, 70, 30. That's a pretty good split. The answer is true. She does say 10,000 years. And she says she actually never saw it used, which is very interesting. But she does say 10,000 years in Silver Flames. Leaderboard, Kimberly, Caitlin. Uh, is it Murr, KJ? I love that. Christina and Liv. We got some new leaders on the leaderboard. I love it. Okay, Crescent City questions. When was Lunathian founded? 500, 1,000, 1,500 years. Uh, she said over 10,000 years. Oh, did I? Okay, fine, you guys. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Fine. I'll give you guys that one. I'll go back to the slide. Uh, 
Okay, okay. I told you there's probably going to be one freebie. That's probably your freebie. I'll take that. I'll take that. Okay. When was Ludathian founded? 500, 1,000, 1,500 years ago. You know the answer to this. We talked about it. We, we actually spent quite a bit of time talking about this one. Because I mentioned, I don't know if, I, if you remember, but I mentioned, I was like, hey, that's kind of a funky, like, thing. She said more than 10. Okay, all right, all right, I'll give it to you. Hello from the UK. Hello, hello. All right, all right, I'll give you guys that one. That's fine, that's fine. You get a freebie. Okay, ready? 500, 1,000. The correct answer, 500 years ago. Okay. Okay, what is the name of the first starborn prince? I'm just going to leave this here and let you guys answer. What is the name of the first starborn prince? Is it Reese Peleus Rundanen? Rundanen, crown prince of the Valbard Bay. Oh, here. Does it not let you answer if I do that? There. What is the name? We can't answer now. You should be able to answer now. Sorry, that was my bad. That was my bad. Okay. What is the name of the first starborn prince? Recent Peleus Rundanen. Yes, I put his full name. Rune Dannon knew three things. Fun fact, I made a Rune Dannon knew three things poster and I showed it to my mods and they thought it was too scandalous. So I never sold it. <laughs> I made it like a year ago. <laughs> never sold it. It was like supposed to be like a sexy art piece. And yeah, it never saw the light of day. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a silhouette is what it was. It wasn't like actually graphic, but it was, it was a silhouette of a woman's body. I really liked it, and I was told no. <laughs> I was told absolutely not. <laughs> okay, ready? Oh, you guys did so good. It is Peleus. <laughs> okay, true or false? The humans ruled Midgard for 2,000 years before the Asteri arrived. True or false? Let me see if I still have, like, a photo of it. Oh, I wonder if it's in here. see if I have it. I think I ordered one. Do I still have it? Wait, hold on. Let me see if it's behind me. Let me see if it's behind me. Hold on a second. Because if it, if it is, it would be like here. sworn I might have recently thrown it out which is so funny because I feel like I had it for so long hold on okay wait I'm gonna check one more spot it would, might be here. This is like my secret art file. Okay. For anyone who's like, Sarah, what do you do with art that's sent to you? I do keep it. I do keep all my art. I have a lot of really cool art, actually. I don't... Okay, I'll find it. I thought I had it, but I don't. Okay, you ready? Viewing the results. 
True or false? The answer was true. Good job. Okay. All right. What happened to Thea's youngest daughter? The thing that sent you guys into a spiral. Did she vanish into the night, escape at dusk, or marry Prince Peleus? Okay, hold on. Let's see if it's in here. No, it would have been in my files. It's old. Okay, it's not that old. <gasps> no, that's not it. <gasps> I do have it. You guys want to see what it looks like? Okay, hold on. I'm going to download it. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, you ready? Wait, I'm going to let you guys, and then I'm going to download this, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. This is my favorite Patrick, <laughs> seven year old frat boy. <laughs> Okay. All right. She vanished into the night is the correct answer. Good job. All right. When did the first Fendir appear based on the family tree Bryce found? Based off of the family tree that she found, when did it appear? When did it they appear? Let me look at the Q&A. Oh, wait. I don't think I can while you guys are taking the quiz. Hold on, if this, if this opens up on this side of the computer. Yeah, it's going to. Okay, I'm going to move it super quick. Whoops. Here, you know what, actually? Whoop. Sorry, hold on. There it is. Hold on. Move! I'm going to show them in a second. Okay, here we go. Here, we'll just save it as... Uh, I think the font changed because it says it says this isn't the right font. Okay, let's see. Did it save? I think it did. Okay, you ready? Five thousand years is correct. That is correct. All right. Bonus question. Last question. This is just a fun one. Who was the first cadre member? Who was the first cadre member? This is just a bonus question. As I pull this up. Oh, it's going to appear here. My desktop is stressing you out. Ah, don't worry about it. Oh, let me go back. Sorry. Here. This desktop is changing tomorrow, so it's fine. You guys know the answer to this? Come on. You know the answer. First cadre member, who is it? The first member to join the cadre. All right, let's see. And let me look it up. Here, and while you're doing that, there you go. That's what it looked like. Oh, it just disappeared. The correct answer was Lorcan. Good job, you guys. Look at you. Look at you. Good job. All right, who was it? Number one, Caitlin, Kimberly, Marquege, Liv, and Sam. You guys killed it. The hardest question was the Trove one, which I gave you guys as a bonus, so that's fair. But based off of time, you guys killed it. Okay, Q&A with the uh, Slido. Let me quickly set this up and then I'll show you guys. Before I do this, hold on, let me, let me do this. I'm gonna do my camera only really quick and then I'll pull it up so you guys can see. <laughs> Cause y'all wanted to see. This is what it looked like. And then I, I never sold it. That was it. <laughs> that was, 
I was I was told I was told it was too graphic. <laughs> it did come in a little funky, so I would change it a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I like loved it. <laughs> she is clothed. She is clothed. I loved it. I was like, I'd put that in the bathroom. She's actually wearing underwear. I think it was like a bra and underwear thing. <laughs> but I gave her like a really curvy chick. Well, maybe I'll add it to the shop. Maybe I'll, I'll make some change. I'll make some changes and add it to the shop. Because it would, it would need some changes. Yeah, it would definitely need some changes. So that was my scandalous line. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me set you guys up really quick. We are going to just, nope, I want just this. Whoops, hold on. What happened here? Why, why are you, hold on. Oh. TikTok is having a panic attack. It's fine. Okay, there we go. All right. I am just now looking at the Q&A. I have all of the questions up. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys have a lot of questions in Slido. If you also have questions in the um, in the actual, like, I'll look at the comments too. Okay, let's see here. Let's put this here. Let's put this here. Uh, okay, so um, is the senator considered one of the nine gods and goddesses children of the mother, mother goddess? Um. It, I would say yes, based off of Throne of Glass lore. So the question is regarding Throne of Glass lore. And I would say the, the answer is yes, because there's nothing that would say no. But I would also say that it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't, because it's hard to tell with Throne of Glass lore. It's very, um, it's it's not the most like into it. It's not, some lore in Throne of Glass is not necessarily fully explained, but y yes. Okay. Uh, in a court of wings, we're in chapter 20, only the right words. Are we talking about literally words? Because, uh, at this point, let me see. Is that something that was in my PowerPoint? Let me look. Let me look. In a court of wings and ruin. Uh, only the right words or ingredients potentially, or it could, I mean, I would assume that it wouldn't just be, it would either be, I mean, it's not clear if Rowan or not Rowan, sorry, Reese literally says it's in like an ancient language. So it's, it's, it's he, or he doesn't say what language it is. So it could be an ancient language. It could be a word language that's unknown based off of a theory. I would probably say it's a language, but you know, whatever. Okay, what does the Fey language mean? Is it word marks or is it just an old language? Why is it important? Okay, that's a great question. So there's three kind of, I'm gonna use my whiteboard to kind of explain this for a second. So there is, these are kind of the major languages that you have, okay? So you have word, okay? And the word is like, I'm just gonna put, actually, I'm gonna make it smaller. Okay, so you have word. Did I spell that right? I think so. If I, I always mess up the R and the, hold on. Yeah, I did. No, I didn't. Hold on. So you have the word, which I know, word from the ROM. You would think I know how to spell this. Okay. And this is universal. Okay. Then you have like, based off of like length of language, you have like an ancient. And I'm going to put in parentheses TOG because this is what's mentioned in Era Fire. This is different. So I'm going to put not the same. So not the same as the old language, which is like Rowan's tag. Okay, so those are kind of, those are the languages you have for, um, hold on, I'm going to put this back here. Okay, so these are kind of like the languages that you have for like Throne of Glass, okay? But then Akatar mentions that there's an ancient language, but then they also call it an old language 
of the Fae. I also should put. Okay. So there's old languages of the Fae. There's an old language of the Fae. Okay. And this is the one that Bryce knows. Reese and Amarin. Okay. I put, I didn't put the it. And an Amarin, but you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so that is a that's different. I uh, if you were to ask me personally, I think this ancient language and this old language of the Fae are the same things. I would say these are probably the same, and this is probably just a different dialect of this. But I think these two are the same thing, if you were to ask me. Okay. Like, I would say this old language and this old language is the same if that makes sense. But the word is like a universal language. If you were to ask me, I theorize, this is not canon, I theorize that Bryce, Feyre, and at one point Nesta, but Nesta's tattoo disappeared, and Aelin all have word marks on their tattoos. The other thing, I didn't put this in here because we're gonna talk about languages more in the objects class, the word is described as swirls and whirls. And guess what else is described as swirls and whirls? It's the Illyrian tattoos. So if you were to ask me, those, my theory is that those are the same. But that is not canon information. But it is interesting that they are both described as swirls and whirls. Okay? If you were to ask me, I would say that, yes, there are word marks in Crescent City. But that is not confirmed. Okay. All right. Because I'm trying to make it very clear that I'm just talking canon. I'm not talking theories because I think there's enough people on the internet that talk theories, but then they don't give you guys the correct information. So I'm trying to make it clear, like, based off of my assumptions, this is the theory I have come to the conclusion that I think is canon, but I can't be sure. But this is canon information based off of how I got to this conclusion. Okay. Uh, do we think world walking and the gates are banned because the Asteri are a problem? Potentially, potentially. I really did not know that the Valg. So like, that's another kind of interesting thing. And I didn't put it in the timeline. But just to reiterate, because I think a lot of people assume that the Valg and the Asteri are the same thing. And not to put that theory out there. But it is interesting, okay, that a huge problem for this is that the Valg, okay, first off, and based off of what we have just gone over, Maeve, the Val Kings didn't get to Terrasin or Aurelia for at least 2,000 years. There's no mention of them for 2,000 years. Brandon ruled the Ogwal Forest for 2,000 years. We know Maeve was there for that because Brandon knew Maeve, okay? But based off of what we know, there's no evidence to support that Maeve has been in Aurelia for 10,000 years. And the Valg has been traveling for 17,000. It says that in House of Sky and Breath, okay? But it's interesting to note that the Valg kings, before they were even born, okay, they, it was forbidden to world walk. It says that in Kingdom of Ash. So that's kind of an interesting little piece of knowledge it's an interesting nugget because you're like well holy crap what is what does that even mean um nesta has a new t tattoo she does but i don't think it was like a i don't think it's like a word so yeah okay um uh, so do we th who do we think is the missing daughter theorizing okay theorizing i don't think we know who the missing daughter is i don't I think what I was trying to get you guys to conclude is that her description of having star, stars and shadows. Well, first off, the description is of Helena, who is the eldest daughter. But if the eldest daughter has dark hair and has stars and shadows as magic, that sounds a little like Reese. OK, so the conclusion I would make is that Reese is somehow or the night court is somehow tied to all of this. But we can't jump to that conclusion because what is another piece that we know from Silver Flames? High King Finn was elemental. It wasn't just one location. That happened when the High Lords came into power. So you can't necessarily say, well, Helena was from the Night Court. You can't say that because the Night Court didn't exist. It was all one governing body. But it's interesting that she has Helena, the eldest daughter, has Night Court powers. And then her younger sister vanished into the night. We don't have a description of her, but that is kind of a very interesting 
conclusion. So I would personally, I think you can't necessarily put a name on that person. I wouldn't tell you to, I, I personally wouldn't, but it's a piece of information I would put in the back of my head while I'm reading Flame and Shadow, wondering who the hell this, this sister was. I mean, she could be a goddess. She could be Deanna. She could be so many other people we just don't know. So that's, that's kind of the thing. Um, it looks like Elena's tomb. Yes. Yes. Okay. What is the fey language you mean is a word marks? Okay. We talked about that one. What is the difference? We talked about the Falcon and the Asteri. Are the handmaidens different from the Vanguard and Tower of Dawn? I would say yes. And the reason I say that is because the handmaidens were sent by Maeve. The Vanguard was sent by just the Valk in general. And that sounds to me more like the Valk Kings and less Maeve. They could be the same thing and I could be jumping to a conclusion, but they are described in different ways, which would lead me to theorize that they are different. So that would be, that would be my thing. Uh, I know this is a theories, but the old language in Silver Flames is that linked to the bestie who was trapped in the mountain. Honestly, I always thought it was. I always thought it was. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but wasn't it said that the Night Court was ruled by Moore's family? It is said that the Night Court was ruled by Moore's side of the family. I don't think it was... Uh, I, I would have to triple check this, but I don't know if it said that it was only ruled or if it was ruled by her family for thousands of years and maybe Reese's family ruled. Like, maybe they're flip-flopping. I don't know that for sure. But Moore and Reese both have ties to the Night Court. But remember, Moore is also blonde. She's not described like Helena is. So I, I, to jump to that conclusion is a little hard for me. Just, just throwing that out there. Uh, why was Fender important? It was important because it was Danica's. That's Danica's line. Um, do we know why Amran ended up in the prison? No. The conclusion that was pretty much given in Wings and Ruin and basically it's given in the original trilogy is that they felt like she and I and I didn't put it in this PowerPoint, but I'm putting it in the Fantastic Beans one is that she, you know, they put her in there because they reminded her of their former masters. That's why she was put in. They are cousins. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, okay, let me see. We talked about that. We used to we talked about Helena and the sister. Doesn't Bryce see the Book of Breathings in the gallery when she's fighting Micah? Yes, she sees the Book of Breathings and the Walking Dead. She sees both. The Walking Dead is the book that taught Aelin the word marks. It also taught Aelin how to open a portal to hell, okay? And then she saw the Walking Dead, and then she saw the Book of Breathings. Remember, the last time we saw the Book of Breathings in Akka War, it's when Feyre throws it into the cauldron, okay? That's the last time the Book of Breathings was ever saw is when Feyre throws it into the cauldron, okay? That is, that is, uh... That is where that is. Um, do we have any theories on Sophie's purpose in the story? No. I mean, I think it was the purpose was more for the brother and the prejudices of magical beings over humans. I think that was the purpose, if you were to ask me. That's what I would say. Uh, someone said the text is too small. I can't read it. Uh, I would tell you that I got it as big as I possibly could. If you're on TikTok, yeah, it's probably super, super tiny. Um, but... If you're on, you know, a computer, I would make it big screen or a TV. It's probably, I know it's small. Believe me, you should have seen the old Throne of Glass slides. That was seven point font. This is at least like normal size font. Okay. Uh, let me see. How did he put him in the prison? A glass reflection? I don't actually know that. I don't actually know that. Wait, is the Book of Breathings not in, Je it's the Book of Breathings was in Jezba's library. That is correct. That is correct. Okay. Uh, do you think SGM kept Amron around so she could be basically a translator for Bryce? I think SGM kept Amron around because she's an angel and she ties together Crescent City. Uh, am I the asshole is applicable for all good stories? Yes, that's true. Uh, how does Bryce have starborn powers? Didn't Rune get his from only his mother? No. Um, Bryce and... Uh, it, it, it could have been from any fey line. They, they don't, they don't say it. Well, first off the autumn King is from a Valen. Uh, Cormac says that in house of sky and breath, but, and I believe the fey line is typically from someone in a Valen, but 
based off of the conclusion most of the Fae are from Perthian, so it really could be anyone from Perthian. Um, okay, any theories? I think Amran is an actual biblical, um, if you ask me, I think she is a biblical uh, seraphim. Not the seraphim that is defined in Akawar, like an actual seraphim, based off of a lot of religious texts. Um, okay, let me see, let me see, let me see. I'm getting rid of the tandem question. Uh, is someone moving these books around or are the books moving on their own? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's the question we all have. Uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a really, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, I don't know about the prison thing. Do you think Maeve has powers from the cauldron? There is no clear cauldron in um, Aurelia. I mean, I, I don't think there was. Let me confirm that. Uh, it says she came through a word gate is what it says about the mother goddess. And then it just says, so, you know, some theories suggest the mother goddess is just a spirit from one of these other worlds and that she strayed through something called a word gate and found Aurelia in need of form of life. So it doesn't say that there was ever really a cauldron in Throne of Glass, um, which I did look for that. That being said, Maeve's powers could come from something like that. I don't know. I I mean, if you, I, I go back and forth on if the Valk is a creation of hell or if it's a creation from the Asteri or if it's just something else, but I don't think the Valk and the Asteri are on the same level. I think the Asteri is, the Asteri is creepier than the Valk. So that is the conclusion I have. Uh, the name Ramiel is one of the art. Yep. Ramiel sounds like an angelic name. Yep. Super pumped about the magical objects. Yeah. So our next lesson is going to be on, let me confirm that. Can you tell I live each day vicariously through whatever's going on? The next lesson is on fantastic beans and where to find them. And it's on October 19th. So you guys have, uh, basically a month before we have our next beans, our next meeting, and it's on fantastic beans. So we're going to talk about the Mycenaeans. We're going to talk about the Fae in all three worlds. We're going to talk about the Valg, the Asteri. Um, we'll talk about the gods. We'll talk about, you know, all of those different things, just so you guys, um, are fully aware. Um, okay. Hope that helps. How have I been? I've been good. I took a week off of work. It's been really, really nice. <laughs> it's been really nice. Um, I am feeling very refreshed. I wish it was longer. I think we all feel that way when we have to go back to work. Um, but it's, it's been, it's been a good, it's been a good week. That's for sure. I'm trying to, to figure out, I really love doing this stuff. And so I'm trying to figure out more ways of how I can incorporate it in my day to day. Um, because it's, I have a lot of fun with this. So, um, but yeah. Um, okay. We talked about that. Any theories on who the ocean queen is? I literally have no theories on the water court other than I think they could be tied to my city and throne of glass, which is such a weak theory. It's like, doesn't even necessarily add it, but that's my literally only theory about it. Um, we talked about the missing daughter non. Okay. Any other SJM questions? Let me see what's going on in the chat. Um, we talked about that. Do the Illyrians have a language? That's a good question. I don't know. That's a really good question. I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, is anyone super excited about the Barnes and Noble special edition house of earth and blood and house? Yes. Um, and for anyone wondering, Avery and I will be going live here on YouTube and on TikTok again tomorrow on Tuesday after Sarah J Mass is live. So we'll be discussing everything. So that will once again be a full Sarah J Mass spoiler. Uh, the next lesson is October 19th. Is that what I said? October 19th? Yes. October 19th. And it's on fantastic beans and where to find them. So that is what it is. And don't forget, seriously, guys, don't forget, if you want to get the um, Masterclass Collection, go grab it now. We might expand upon some of the pieces in it. Um, I was shocked to see you guys really loved the Masterclass like logo. I mean, I love it. So I'm glad you guys like it. Um, so please, please make sure um, to go grab it if you want it. Um, okay. 
is the live recap going to be, this is recorded. So once I hit end, it's gonna, you're gonna find it on YouTube. So you can watch it immediately after I hit end. So you guys have plenty of time. Okay, I'm gonna answer this non Sarah J Mass question. How many books are in Lady of Darkness? And is there going to be any more of them? Is there a specific reading order to them? Oh. Hmm, how do I answer this? This is what I'm gonna say about Lady of Darkness. Sarah J Mass fans, you, I, I'm, I'm gonna be very, very, my Taurus energy, I just need you to know right before I say what I'm about to say. The Aelin Nesta Taurus energy that's going about to come out of my mouth is going to be very aggressive and very strong, okay? Don't take it personally, okay? This is just my very aggressive opinion about Lady of Darkness. I don't care what the hell you're reading right now. I don't care what the hell Book Talk has convinced you is the most important thing on your TBR. As a Sarah J. Mass fan who has sat here and listened to me talk about theories for two hours, you're stupid if you haven't picked up Lady of Darkness. You, that that's just that's the that's the honest to god truth and the reason i say that is because you are essentially starting you're at the you're at the the starting line of the next thing you're at the starting line that's what you are okay lady of darkness is a five book one novella when i when i say novella it's not tower of dawn it's less than 100 pages um it's on kindle unlimited okay and you're going to read, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this right now. You're going to read the first two books and you're going to go, Sarah, this feels very Throne of Glassy. I know. Trust me. Just trust me, okay? Because it's not. It's not, okay? It isn't. But it is so freaking good. It's so good. It's like, and then you're going to get to the Legacy series. So uh, in regards to, is there going to be any more? It's a completed series. Um also, is there a specific order? I, if you were to ask me, I would say read Lady of Darkness before you pick up the Legacy series. Melissa, who's the author, would want me to tell you that you could read it in any order you want, meaning you could read Lady of Darkness or you could read the Legacy series and then Lady of Darkness. But if you were to ask me and not the author, I would say read Lady of Darkness first. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Okay. Melissa would want me to tell you you could pick up the series in any order you want. I would tell you to read Lady of Darkness first. It's spicy. Does that help? The pacing in it is amazing. I want to quickly say that. The pacing is amazing. Okay? It is like, like, let's be real, we've all read a book. <laughs> Hosef, where um, you get to a certain character's point of view, <coughs> Therion, and you just want to roll your eyes because you just you just can't. You know it's going to be important. You know it's going to be important, and you know Sarah has a plan, but you just can't focus, <coughs> Therion. And you you know you know you know you're getting you know you're trying. Okay, I never once felt that way reading Lady of Darkness. Every point of view, I was like, even point of views, I was like, Ugh, I don't know about this. They always, they always surprised me. They were great, well-paced, really, really love it. Brit, the Brit approved orders in Discord. Yes. Yes. Need a new series. Yep. 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 Highly recommend. There's Faye. There's gods and goddesses. There's dragons, there's um, witches, there's something like a mating bond, there's other types of bonds, there's lots of library textbooks, there's mirrors, I'm not going to say anything else, just that you need to read it. Also, please check their trigger warnings. I should say that too, because they're definitely in the first book of Lady of Darkness. I think that probably has the biggest trigger warning. Uh, but if you've read Fortuna Sworn, you're fine. How spicy? Uh, mm, I'm never good at answering this question. I mean, it's good spice. Is that answer? It, it's a slow, it like, but it'll build. I mean, there's some spice in the first book, but it'll build. I think Larry Dix is getting bad here because people are comparing to SDM Sage. She's plagiarizing just like City of God. She's not. She's not. She's not. 
As someone who's read Sarah J. Mass and could tell you, I could see a plagiarism of Sarah J. Mass. She's not. It's called a trope. It's called Sarah didn't p- do it first. Okay, she didn't. She didn't. She didn't. Can you? You want to know? Guess what? Read Angel's Blood and you tell me who plagiarized who first. And I can tell you right now, it's not the author of Angel's Blood because guess what? That book came out before Crescent City did. Uh. So yeah. It's, oh yeah, and uh, I should say this, Reign of Shadows and Endings, which is the first book in the Legacy series that is darker. It is more of a darker take. But as someone who doesn't typically do a lot of dark romance, I was fine. So, need to make that known. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else before we totally end and I'm going to go play Boulder's Gate? Because that's something I really want to go to. I'm going to go play some Boulder's Gate. And honestly, I need more of you to play with me. Um, Cool. Looks like we did good. I'm so proud of us. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to end the live stream. Thanks for hanging out for two hours with me while we did this. You will see me for our next lesson. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this. Goodbye friends. (laughs) And on TikTok, I'm just going to go ahead and end it and say, Goodbye, friends. It's recorded and saved on YouTube. Love y'all. Oh, it says starting soon. That's embarrassing. You know what I mean.